The European green crab is an invasive species in the San Francisco Bay, and it's also one of the best little helpers to help a species stay under control. That's the sea otter. To explain more about what studies are showing, we're joined live by an ecologist, Riki Jeppesen. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so these green crabs, on one hand, they're not great for the environment, but on the other hand, they're helping out the sea otters. Do I have that right? Yep, you pretty much have that right. So Elkhorn Slough is the only California estuary where the sea otter successfully has reestablished a substantial population since they were hunted to near extinction. So at Elkhorn Slough Reserve, um, um, National Estuary and Research Reserve, we monitor otters because they're threatened species, and we monitor green crabs because they're invasive species. And what we have found over 20 years of monitoring is that when the green crab numbers have been the highest, the otter numbers have been the lowest, and vice versa. Yeah. The more otters there are around, the fewer green crabs we've seen. So they formed a nice little relationship here. Where are the green crabs from if they're an invasive species? How did they get here to begin with? They're native um, to Europe, so their natural range is from uh, Norway down to uh, northern, northern Africa. They got here in the first place with, uh, as probably transported in ballast water with shipping. So they arrived in San Francisco Bay in 1989, and since then they have spread up and down the U.S. West Coast. And the the sea otters are eating them. Did they, how did that relationship start, do you think? They just, the sea otters, like there's so many of them here? Like what did your research show? Um, we found that sea otters are very hungry creatures. Uh, they have very high metabolism and they need a lot of food to stay warm. Uh, USGS has been watching what otters eat uh, in Elkhorn Slough uh, for many years. And so they observed that the green crabs were being actively consumed by the otters. So because of mm -hmm. this, now that they have this extra food source, are they still going to be listed as a threatened or a protected federal species? Will this change that? Yeah, I mean, although... Although they're doing well eating the crabs and they are opportunistic feeders. So, they, I mean, they, they prefer to eat clams, but if there are crabs everywhere, then that is uh, probably the most efficient food item to get. But we, there's only about 3,000 left um, in today of that species, and there used to be hundreds of thousands. So I don't see the threatened species status changing anytime soon. And what surprised you the most about this pattern and what your studies are showing? I think our study highlights the importance of long-term monitoring. I mean, long-term monitoring, it's hard to fund. The work is not glamorous. But we found that if you keep tromping around in the mud, you keep collecting your data and you persist, when you have information from 20 to 25 years, you are actually able to tell um, a good and convincing story um, at the end of the day. Long-term investments. What's the, what are the next steps here? The next steps are to keep supporting those native top predators such as the threatened sea otters because by doing so, you have this indirect benefit of this uh, native species being able to control an invader. It's really a win-win situation. Um, you get two problems taken care of in one fell swoop. And uh, you can say that the sea otters are our assistant estuarine managers. Well, we're so glad you could come on, Rike Jeppesen, to talk about what's going on there with the sea otters and the crabs. It looks like something that could have had a real negative impact might be having some positive on our um, sea otter species. So thanks for being here. Thank you so much.